Hello there. So this video lecture, we are going to be discussing about one of the, the viewer comments. That comment I have written on the board. Why is the, the resultant located outside the two forces, not between them? I am reading that question once again. So, with reference to lecture 18, resultant of two unequal parallel forces acting in opposite direction. The resultant of two unequal parallel forces acting in the opposite directions. In this case, what will happen? We have taken one example of the un unequal parallel forces we have taken and which are in the opposite direction. So, it means that when I am going to be taking a one line, one bar I have taken, in this case what happened, one force is going to be acting towards upward direction and this force is going to be acting towards the downward direction. In this case, suppose this is going to be the P and this is the Q. The two forces are acting on this member. I told that the resultant component is going to be R is equal to P minus Q. Because these two are moving in the opposite direction, by using the formula of the equilibrium equation, sigma y is equal to 0. On this basis, p minus q, we got it. But we don't know exactly where it is going to be located. That is, this resultant component, where it is located, we don't know. So then what we are going to do, I told that, that's going to be existed outside here. So that means it is not in between the p and q. And not towards side of the q also. Because I am assuming that the P is going to be greater than Q so that the resultant component is going to be over this side, I told. So on this basis, these questions, I am going to be trying to do one or two problems on that practically so that it will come to your mind why the resultant component is never existed between these two rather than it is existed either that side or this side. So that's points we are going to be discussing. So in that connection, I have taken a beam AC and I made to subject it to the, the three forces, they are in the opposite direction. So can you see, at point A, the 40 Newton's load is acting in the downward direction, at point B, 20 Newton's load is going to be acting at B. And similarly, at C, the 37 Newton's is acting towards the upward direction. So regarding this one, how to find out the resultant component? As we know that the sigma f of y is equal to 0, it means the equations of equilibrium are used and I am going to be resolving this force, that's going to be here. So the resultant component I am going to be taking here, this is equal to, so I am going to be considering the downward direction is going to be the positive, upward direction is going to be the negative. So 40, that means upward is going to be the negative or positive, whatever it may be, downward is going to be the positive side. So, the reverse also we can consider the 40 plus 20 minus 37. So, in this case, 40 minus 37, 3 and totally 23 newtons. I got it. This is going to be your resultant component. The magnitude of your resultant component R is equal to 23 newtons. I got it. Now, where it is existed exactly? Is it existed at A or B or at C or somewhere in between? So, for this one, I am going to be taking the moments with respect to A. So, then what will happen when I am going to take the moments with respect to this one? So, I can find out the, the, the location exactly it is the resultant component is existed on this B. So, here the moments with respect to A I have taken. So, when I am going to be taking this is going to be the reference towards this side is going to be the positive side and towards this side is going to be your negative side. At the same time, they are located at 20 newtons 1 meter, 37 meters at the 2 meters distance. At the same time, R may exist over here or may somewhere it is going to be existed. So, I am going to be considering this R also going to be in the same direction. So, I am going to be considering this is your R. So, now what I am going to be, I am taking the moments with respect to the A. So, that I am going to be taking this two are moving in the clockwise direction this is moving in the anti-clockwise direction so these two are going to be the left side of the equation that one is going to be the right side of the equation so the distance between these two i am going to be say the x 
that's going to be your resultant component r into the x plus 20 into 1 that is equal to 37 into 2 I am going to be getting right so one thing I am going to be getting this r value I know this is going to be your 23 into x that's going to be 37 into 2 so in this case what will happen 35 35 70 70 74 I am going to be getting 74 minus 20 the finally x is equal to so the 74 minus means 54 by 23 I am getting so if I am going to be simplifying this part so I am going to be getting here after the simplification 2.348 2.347 meters I got it alright so that is also we got the positive component over here so that x is equal to it is located at 2.347 meters so it means that already we told this with reference to this one towards this side is going to be the positive so then I am going to be measuring up to this is the 2 meters then I am going to be measuring 0 0.347 meters it is going to be like this so the direction of the resultant component acting in the downward direction so this is going to be your resultant component and the total distance from here to here is going to be the 2.347 meters negative. So I am going to be removing my assumption somewhere it is going to be x distance. So I hope you can be able to understand here the resultant component of the parallel forces which are which are unequal parallel forces are acting on your beam. The resultant is going to be always existently outside the, the given problem. So I hope you are able to understand. To more clarification, I am going to do the one more problem on this. So in that connection here, I have taken only the two problems, though are going to be the, uh, the like forces. So it means they are in the same direction. One is the 40 newtons, one is the 20 newtons, which are acting on a beam or some on the object. They are apart with one meter's distance. So now we need to find out the moments and where is the resultant component exactly it is existed. So here, with respect to this, sigma f of y is equal to 0, I am going to be taking this is equal to 40 plus 20. Then your resultant component is equal to the 60 newtons we are getting. So then r is equal to 60 newtons, I got it. But I don't know where it is going to be existed. Somewhere it is there, I am going to be assuming in between for the time being. So that's distance is going to be I am considering the x distance. Now I am going to be taking the moments at A. Suppose this is the A, this is the B. So and then what is the distance we are going to be taking? Can you see here when I am going to be taking the moments at A. So the moments at A is equal to 0. So then what is the equations we are getting? This is passing to this point and because of this one there is no moment is going to be acting. So here is the 20 newtons and this is the resultant component 60 newtons is acting at a distance of x. So these two are moving in the same direction. So, so that is equal to r into x, r into x force into distance plus 20 into the distance is going to be your 1 meter distance is there. So from this one I am going to be getting r into x is equal to minus 20 right from this one x is equal to minus 20 by 60 I am going to get. If you are going to do the simplification minus 20 by 60 so that is equal to we are getting minus of 0 0.33 meters. See that is going to be x is equal to minus of 0 0.33 meters I got it. So can you see already we do have a discussion when with the reference when we are moving to the reference towards the right side is the positive. When you are moving towards is the negative. Now I got it minus 0 0.33. So then in this case what will happen? I am coming to this side. Right? This is my resultant component. R is equal to 60 newtons. And the distance is it is going to be 0 0.33 meters. This is going to be your A. Finally I am going to say this is going to be your C. I hope you are able to understand the resultant component it is not existed in between just I am removing the assumption of this one the 40 newtons and 20 newtons is there can you see which load is going to be the more and your resultant component also shifting towards that side 
and it is out of the the a and b points we are going to be getting so to for more clarification i am going to do the one more problem on this part in continuation of giving the clarification for this the question i have taken here is one more problem that is the 40 newtons is acting upward direction and 30 newtons is going to be acting in the downward direction now we need to find out the resultant component r is going to be how much what is the x value where it is going to be located exactly so i am going to be applying here the sigma f of y is equal to 0 so in this case what will happen the 40 newtons is acting upward direction 30 newtons acting in the downward direction so that means 40 minus 30 newtons then finally r is equal to 10 newtons i got it right r is equal to 10 newtons we got it but we don't know the location exactly where it is now again i'm going to be taking the the moments with respect to a is equal to zero that means i'm going to be taking this as a reference and somewhere i'm going to be assuming here so here is the 10 newtons also acting towards this side this is the r so can you see here r force is going to be acting towards the upward direction and 30 newtons acting in the downward direction it means one is moving in the anti-clockwise direction another is going to be moving in the clockwise direction with respect to the a so that's point i'm going to be taking r into the distance from the reference i'm going to be considering that is the x that is the x is equal to 30 newtons into 1 all right so from this one x is equal to 30 by r is equal to how much we got it that is the 10 newtons so then once if i'm going to be substituting i got the at 3 meters distance it means that x is equal to 3 meters and that too i got this is the positive so then what will happen in this case it is going to be shifting towards this side and this is going to be your r is equal to your 10 newtons and it is located at a distance of 3 meters from here can you see the resultant component is going to be existed here outside the a and b it is not in between the uh, two forces it is going to be very clear from this one if i am going to be taking 40 as well as the 20 so then in this case what will happen 40 minus 20 means i am going to be getting here is the 20 newtons if i am going to be substituting here that's going to be 20 by 20 then finally i am getting at this point see we can changing this the value of 30 to 20 or 20 to 10 also we can cross check in this part so but it is going to be existed outside the the two newtons it is not between i hope i able to answer your question exactly that why the resultant component always existed outside the the two unequal forces is going to be when the memory is going to be subjective i hope the, thank you so please subscribe to my channel so that the sequence of lessons you are able to see and your knowledge is going to be in the better position you are able to prepare for the unknown problems also thank you